Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Epic Realms. My guest today is a legend author. He's done all kinds of works for all kinds of things. Uh, the list is a mile long. We're talking D&D, Paizo, uh, Marvel, Iron Kingdoms, World of Darkness, uh, Fantasy Flight, even Nickelodeon. The list goes on and on. Uh, our guest today is Richard Lee Byers. Richard, welcome and thank you for joining us. Oh, glad to be here. I want to say in a cold, I'm going to try to keep the uh, coughing and sneezing and uh, snuffling to a minimum. But uh, if, if, I, uh, if I do a some of it, I apologize. No problem. It is very understandable. And if I sweat profusely, it's because it's hot and our AC went out. So our listeners can enjoy that. And uh, I think that's also draining on our, our powers all over the world. Uh, we're in the midst of giant heat wave. So hopefully that doesn't ruin our internet connections. Uh, we've had a little bit of issues earlier. So uh, if that happens, then we'll just have to have you come back yeah. later and do it again. <laughs> and we'll talk about something else. Do that anytime. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like we could have a real cornucopia of disgusting bodily. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> but uh, hopefully not. So you've done a long list of things. Uh, in my mind, I want to say you're like the cool uncle of Forgotten Realms. I don't know why I want to say that, but I, I want to say that. Uh, and you, you've done probably over over a hundred books. I don't know. Do you know the number off the top of your head? Like, is it is it like um, two hundred more than two hundred uh, books? Or <laughs> I don't know. It's it's more like uh, somewhere between sixty and seventy. I think. Is it? Because so I, I I don't know. I mean that's. Looking on good. I don't, I don't think you could possibly. Yeah, I have. I think the uh, uh, Goodreads it's, is um, lists you as multiple. It's weird. It's, it's... We are okay. Having... It's, you've got. Um, it gets funny because you know, like books go through different editions, or they get you know. Something you wrote as an individual novel gets plugged into a three volume omnibus, and they people start counting that as a different book. And uh, but, but I think 60 plus is probably more accurate. Okay, good to know. Good to know. All I have really to go off of is like when I see stuff on like look you up Amazon, Goodreads, they gave you like six plus pages. Of course, that includes anthologies. I'm probably including anthologies, not just novels. But that yeah. being said, yeah, Amazon also. Uh, yeah, Amazon also plugs in stuff that um, is not by you, but I right. think that maybe they can sell to people that would, yeah. uh, would buy your stuff. So that inflates it. When did you start? Like, around what year was, like, your first published novel? <clears throat> oh, my first published novel, I think, was... Uh, 88 or right, right around that 1988, maybe 1989. And before that, did you have a lot of a uh, lot of interest in writing? Growing up, did you think, "Hey, I might, I might want to be a writer"? Or did you write a lot? Well, I, was always, um, I was always interested in being a writer, and I did write. But um, people told me that, um, you know, I heard a lot of people say, "Well, you know." writers you know you usually can't make a living so you should have like a real job and then you could write on the side so um so i wound up going into a psychology mental health field and thinking okay i'll do that and then it'll be helpful to creating characters and motivating characters and stuff and um it, it'll be interesting in its own right and it'll also yeah, and then I'll write on the side. But what I found was that I went to work in a mental health facility, that it was sufficiently draining that um, I didn't actually write anything. And so that went on for some time. And then my mom passed away, and she left me some money. And it was enough money to um, live on as long as I, um, you know, lived cheap very modestly. And uh, I was getting burned out on the mental health field anyway. And I kind of thought, well, if I'm going to write, it's really now or never, and uh, I should either do it now or I should accept that I'm not really going to do it. It's just a pipe dream. So I quit my job and I did it, and uh, it didn't wasn't too long before I um, 
placed a short story or two in a in a small press and pay any money but it was uh at least kind of validation and uh after a uh year after like a year or so i managed to place my first novel and um despite it being you know pretty terrible really <laughs> but um uh it and um you know things went on from there did you find that your your work in the mental health field did that help uh to write stories and to develop characters you know they kind of kind of less than i thought it would and when, when I went in, it was, um, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, I mean, the way that the kind of intellectual understanding that studying psychology gives you is different, I think, than the kind of uh, empathic understanding that you need a fiction writer. And for that reason, I, I think maybe it may have helped a little, but but really not a lot. What about for building stories or anticipation and stuff like that? Did the same thing where you thought it would and it didn't um, or? Well, I mean, I don't, I didn't really think about it in those terms. I had no, I think that in terms of, uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, the pacing of a story and what will, um, what will resonate with an audience and, um, you know, what, uh, what thing you will scare them or thrill them or touch them or whatever that um actually reading a lot of things that you admire and you think those things well will probably help you a lot more than uh, studying a discipline like psychology okay makes a lot of sense did you have any uh things that gave you inspiration when you were you know when you were growing up any particular books or stories or tv shows or anything like that that kind of inspired you Well, yeah, when I was, um, I was lucky when I was, was um, growing up was just when a lot of the uh, really uh, great pulp writers were being reprinted in paperback. So I was able to, um, able to, you know, stuff by people like uh, Robert E. Howard and H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, about, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs is like the first writer fantastic fiction I ever read. It was really, really influential on me when I was a kid. And uh, then um, on top of that, there was a lot of, um, you know, there were writers that were, were working then but were very interesting, like um, Rogers Lasney and, uh, and uh, Carl Edward Wagner and, uh, you know, Fritz Leiber and uh, Jack Vance. And uh, I kind of uh, sorted all of the influ their, their influences and, um, I read, uh, you know, I read Dumas, Three Musketeers, and his sequels. I read, um, I read, El Sabatini. I think that um, uh, George MacDonald Fraser's Flashman books. I think that, um, you know, I've read a lot of great fiction since then too. But I think it's the stuff that you read when you're growing up that probably influences you most deeply and certainly what nudges you towards wanting to be a writer when you when you after you made that first book uh did that end up getting around did you have to do some other works before you kind of got your foot in the door to some some bigger works like how well, did you well, how did you well, bridge that gap okay well that first novel that i wrote um you know was was you know i sent it everywhere and it was rejected everywhere right and finally there was a um finally um there was a company that uh decided that it was going to um you know that it was just just getting started and um i sent it to them and uh and they bought it and they published it and I second one too and within both of them coming out within a very brief period of time and basically as soon as they released them the company went out of business so, you know, nobody ever, these books were not really distributed. Nobody ever saw them. So from there, I went to um, writing horror and I did uh, a few for a few horror books for Zebra. And I did uh, one for Berkeley and then the, um, the horror, the big horror boom of the uh, 1980s, you know, 
fell apart and all of a sudden there wasn't any market for horror books anymore so i thought well damn what am i going to do now right so um i i looked at uh, i knew that there was just there's fiction at that point coming out that was based on role-playing games and i thought well you know i play D &D. i'm a big fantasy fan Mm -hmm. i could do these so um i wrote to um Phil Athens, who was at that time kind of the head editor at, of fiction at uh, Wizards, and uh, said, hey, look, I can do this stuff. And he said, um, and he said, well, why don't you write a story for one of this, for this anthology we got coming out? And if we like the story, we'll buy it, and, you know, things will build from there. And he did like the story, and indeed things did build from there. And I also contacted people like... Um, uh, you know, the world of darkness people and said, I can do this. And as a result of that, I picked up uh, a couple of uh, Vampire the Masquerade novels and uh, I, I think it was four uh, Wraith novels and, uh, and, and basically kind of drifted into um, doing more tie in fiction than anything else. Although I have continued to, over the years to do various things that were all mine and not tied into it. So when you did get in uh, to Wizards of the Coast and you started doing Forgotten Realms, did you know, did you have an idea that, hey, these are, these particular characters or these particular books, they're going to take off and they're going to keep coming back for more and to the point where uh, you have multiple different series within Forgotten Realms, whether it's uh, the Haunted Lands or the, the, the Rogue Dragons, Brotherhood of the Griffin, you know, all of those, did you know that those were going to, you know, take off the way they did? No, because, you know, it all happens one at a time, you know, mm-hmm. it's, um, there's, um, or at least that's how it was then. Um, you know, like I said, at first, um, you know, I, I sold them a couple of short stories and I didn't know that they were ever going to want anything other than short stories. And uh, if, if they even continued to want that. And then they did the uh, Symbia series. And yeah. the Symbia series was specifically designed to, we're going to get some new novelists, right? Okay. And uh, it was kind of a writing contest. Um, they, they said, um, you know, you, you, if you were invited in, they said, okay, these are the... Um, you know, these are the characters that are in this one family in this, you know, the city of Sembia. And, um, you know, pick one you like and uh, send us a pitch. And, uh, you know, we already kind of know you could write because we've seen your short stories or whatever. But uh, send us a pitch for what you do in the novel. And um, so I picked the matriarch of the family, Shammer, and uh, they liked my pitch for her. Um it may have helped me that she was on the surface not the most uh you know kind of crazy adventure type character uh in the family the the children were um superficially a lot more um uh, a lot more uh dynamic so um i may have had uh, less competition to come up with an idea for him but for but anyway be that as it may they took my idea and um so now, okay, so now I've done one novel for them, and they continue to ask for novels. And the way it worked then is that event is that as they got to trust you more and more, and you've done more, then they would offer you bigger and bigger projects. Okay. And I, as I recall, the first like big thing that they asked for me to do was um, a Year of Rogue Dragons. They said we decided it's time to do a um, trilogy that. Um, showcases all the different kinds of dragons in the forgotten realms of which there are scads you know just right. a ton of them and um and we you know we we're interested in having you write it what would you do with that and uh so i told them and they they liked the idea and uh you know from there i was kind of aware that i would get offered some of the bigger stuff because you know i had done the one and then they they liked it pretty well so from there, I got to be in, um, you know, Year of Rogue Dragons, and I got to do my uh, <clears throat> Fae trilogy, which showcased the Undead of the Realms the same way that the previous trilogy had showcased the Dragons, and I got to launch my series about my mercenary comedy, Brotherhood of the Griffin, and that's 
and finally do the book uh, that um, was supposed to, it was one in the six book series that was supposed to kind of fix the forgotten realms after they changed it in ways that a lot of the longtime readers didn't like right. the fourth edition. Right. Uh, they said, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to fix it. And, 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 so we're going to have a six novel series that fixes it. And um, you do one of those. And I did. And people seem to like that book pretty well. But unfortunately, after that, we did that, I know we all had great expectations for the future because, you know, by God, you know, we were the six people that were picked to do right. that. And then they said, well, other than Ed, other than uh, Bob Salvatore's books, we're not going to do any more Elms novels. And it's like, oh, shit. But, uh, that's, just, that's the way it is. When, when you were sitting down with them, you know, they said, you're going to, we want you to write the Rogue Dragons and showcase all of these. Yeah. Are you sitting on a phone call with them? Or is it in person? Do, do they like bring you in to, to sit you down? Uh, is it just all via, you know, letters or mail or email or, you know, depending on the year, I'm guessing. I think that when think Rogue Dragons was all email. Okay. Now, what we did, uh, War of the Spider Queen, they actually brought me, uh, they actually brought me out there to the West Coast and, and for a multi-day meeting with, uh, with the people who were involved with that. And we did... Um, when the realms were going to have the hundred year time jump and the, and, 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 uh, and that we had a, there was a big meet in face meeting about that at, uh, at a Gen Con, as I recall. I know I've been out to the West Coast. When they brought me out for the other time was, but I, it might've been, uh, might've been the six book series. Okay. Is that something that's kind of difficult when you're sitting down with that and writing them down like this is my pitch? Like, how long do you take between they, them saying, we want to hear your pitch? And you're like, oh, crap, I've got to come up with this idea. You know, do they catch you off guard or is it like slow and going? And so you kind of get a heads up ahead of time that you know that they're going to ask you to, to give um, them a pitch. No, nah, well, I mean, you, uh, you know, people who are more plugged in and knowledgeable and savvy about things man i usually don't know till they ask me and it, you know it, it can take me uh, a few days you know but i mean usually i'll usually within a, a few days i'll have an idea that's as good as any idea i'm likely to have right and uh, and i mean sometimes they give you a piece of the idea or and i would okay i would work with that like with the with the um yeah, I think it was they were the two said, "Well, why don't you make it about, you know, a rage of dragons?" Because that's this big dramatic realms wide event that that happens every I think it was every few centuries or something. Yeah. I'm trying to remember now, but um, and uh, you know, I and so they gave me that, and I went off and I thought about it, and I said, "Well," and I came back and I said, "Well, you know, there've been rage." periodically through the history of the realms and the realms have always you know survived it and then you know a few centuries passed and there's another rage so i said why don't we do a story about the biggest worst rage there ever was the rage that threatened to destroy everything and along the way we will um, explain why these things happen and we'll um we'll fix it so they don't happen anymore and uh they were okay with that because the next rage after the rage I was going to write about wasn't going to happen for, wasn't scheduled to happen for centuries anyway. Right. So they figured, well, we'll never get up to that. I have spade it and just say, oh, damn, if only we could have a rage. But, you know, it got fixed way back when. So um, so they, that was the core concept. And then I thought about, well, what characters can, um, you know, what characters would be interesting? And I came up with... Um, I came up with my character, my dragon hunting characters, including the uh, half golem guy who had been horrendously mutilated by dragon and thought he hated all dragons. And then, of course, he falls in love with a good dragon who can take human form right. and has to deal with that. And then I had the... Um, well, and there are so many people that, that use that concept as yeah. character ideas for their own mm -hmm. characters. Because it's yeah. such an intriguing, unique, you know, it really hadn't been done much before. Yeah. And then I had the uh, the winged elf character who, uh, we, you know, I always, always see elves as being um, kind of snooty and uh, 
you know, excessively proud of being an elf. So I just thought I would do a, uh, an elf character who was actually kind of ashamed of being an elf. Because that would, yeah, that would be interesting and different. And I was heavily into the sport of fencing at that time. So I thought, well, I'll make you the fencing master. That, that'll, that'll make sense. And, you know, that, that's, it, it all just kind of evolves from there. That shows you how you kind of plug in things one at a time until you've got a story. Did you go to them for any books? Or did they were all the ideas brought to you like, hey, can you, we want you to work on this? Or were there any that you were like, hey, I really want to do this? Is there a time or a space for me to fit this in? Well, I mean, the, with the big stuff, they tend to, um, you know, it, it tended to be that they wanted something. I mean, it's like um, like your rogue dragons. Let's showcase all the dragons, and with the um, the Fae trilogy, it was, well, let's take Fae from what it is in third edition to what we want it to be in fourth edition. Let's write a trilogy that shows how that happened. And, um, you know, the, 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 the things that we did to, the, let's undo the things that we did to the realm that it turns out nobody likes. Right. Um, would, um, other stuff though you would uh, you know you would go to them with with kind of your idea like with um with brotherhood of the griffin i did um, i'd created this mercenary company that was going to be part of the uh, Thay trilogy and uh i said well i would like to continue with these guys because um you know i don't really think we have uh, books about mercenary companies and that could be kind of interesting and people seem to like Right. Did we lose you? And that was a you know fairly big project. I've done the several you know I did a, a, a few books about them. Yeah, the, I think I think that's there's a lot of stuff that I think and also certainly I, obviously they did well because obviously they had five books. You know they kept asking for more, so obviously it was popular. Are we? Are you still yeah, there? It, I mean, it was in 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 con and yeah. Our, our, your your voice is kind of in doing that breaking up thing, but it, right. yeah. I, I mean, I felt like it was popular. I've certainly heard from people that uh, liked it. Uh, it was I don't know. It was like a, I, a, they were coming out at a time when I guess the whole concept of uh, realms novels was being reevaluated. That the end was coming, and I didn't know it, but um, yeah, because. They, they didn't have big print runs. And uh, you, I hear from a lot of people who want to, um, you know, want to read them and they're having trouble finding them at less than, you know, crazy high prices from used booksellers. Right. And uh, as far as I know, they're still all available on Audible. So if people like, you know, people are okay with audiobooks. They can experience the story that way and not have to, you know. Say, I am a you know, huge, I talk about Audible and audiobooks all the time. That's pretty much the main way that I consume books these days. Uh, yeah. I can't, I, I don't have a, the attention span to sit down or the time to sit down and read anymore. So everything I consume now is audiobook, which is right. great that everybody's, you know, everybody's doing that. And yeah, yeah, you have so many that are on audiobook that it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, I'm delighted that people can still get them somehow, you know? I mean, so the stories are still available in some format. Right. Well, and then you get, like, sometimes so you get some really good narrators that do such an amazing job bringing those characters to life via their voices. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've, heard, I've been I've fortunate that I've heard from a number of my, you know, people that have experienced the books, and I would say, oh, this, the, they, they really gave you a good guy to uh, read it, you know? Awesome. Do you listen to audiobooks at all yourself? Listen to it. No, I, I I read on I read uh, ebooks because okay. for reading for me is a lot faster than, than listening. Right. And I no, I, I, a and easier. a lot of people say that that they it's easier and quicker for them to read, you know, to read it than it is to yeah. listen to somebody else read it. Yeah, I guess a lot of people listen while driving in their cars, but I, I like to listen to the music when I drive in my car. So yeah, that's I listen while I'm driving as well. And I'll when I get when I get to the point where I can't concentrate, that's when I throw the music on. Right. <laughs> uh so Forgotten Realms is obviously like one of the biggest tie-in fictions because you're writing for 
you know, D and D, but right. you've had a, your list. I've, I've got a small list here. Uh, World of Darkness, Warhammer, a little bit here in the Magic the Gathering. We mentioned off screen a little bit the that uh, Arkham Horror, uh, Iron Kingdoms. I just, you have so much stuff. How do you how do you keep it all straight when you're when you're doing a tie in fiction and go okay, this is the information to go okay. Well, I got to do the Iron Kingdoms now. And go, okay, wait, this information was from Warhammer. This is not Iron Kingdoms or or whatnot. How do you separate and, and keep that stuff categorized in your mind? Well, it, it probably helps a lot if you've got a really shitty memory. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I remember relatively literal of what the Warhammer world is like at this point. So it's not going to be true when I'm writing something else, but... Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I've, I've just never really had an, an issue with that. I've been able to focus on whatever I was doing at, at that time, and uh, you know, with that world. And of course, you know, some of the stuff like um, Arkham Horror. Well, I, you know, I read a lot of crap when I was a kid. I can still read um, Cthulhu Mythos stuff, and it's you know, it's a mythos. It's not. I've I've kind of, I've kind of assimilated all that, and it's really you know, Forgotten Realms isn't going to sneak in there anyway, and I'm, you know, just you know, I, I can focus on that and, and do that. Um, the, uh, I, hope, I hope I'll get to do more Arkham Horror. I enjoyed the two I did, and they're being, uh, the, they're the novellas that uh, I did and some of the other people and other people did are being re-released in uh, Omnibus Edition. So hopefully that'll prove popular you learn. People will go to Aconite Books and say, hey, we love the stories that these guys wrote. You should have them do some... Uh, uh, Arkham Horror novels now, but because uh, the, they are doing those, but I, I haven't. My phone hasn't run on that yet. Well, being somebody who's loved, you know, Lovecraftian stuff for so long, like it seems like you'd be a shoe in for something like that. Yeah, I hope that um, you know. I, I hope I'm going to get that. It, it's it's interesting though. My experience is that. Um, um, companies that have multiple IPs that they do, they like to, to a degree, they kind of like to pigeonhole you. Yeah. Um, it's like, um, you know, once I was in Forgotten Realms, nobody was ever going to ask me to do it in one book. Which is sad. And, but, uh, if if they keep me, you know, if they if they think okay, he's a, a Marvel guy now, they may or may not offer me any more any art, new Arkham or who knows. Well, hopefully that's not the case. Especially, are you going to be doing more? You know, it's it's not like Arkham. So. I'm, I'm very happy. To... I'm sorry that broke up. No, I was going to say I'm glad that. Um... Sorry, <laughs> the um. With that, you'd think that that wouldn't be an issue because you're, are you still doing stuff for the Mobius? The tales of, uh, oh, my brain is farting. Mobius and Basil and Mobius. Yeah, those ongoing. Uh, there's, there's another book in the works and I contributed my pieces of it. And I, you know, having tournament and gotten paid i haven't really kept track of it after that but yeah. um so i don't know when it's coming out or if, if everybody else has already done their stories but um but I, that is that's ongoing and i know there will be um i know that ryan Schifrin, who created the series and, and the characters you know fully intends for it to continue i hope to contribute more to future volumes and uh, but all i know for sure is that this one is that the next one is coming out and i uh, I did my bits. I did um, with, with with the last one. Um, I would turn in my story to last because of other stuff, and I know that other writers were saying, "When the hell is he going to get done?" So, so this book can come out. But with the, this new one, I I got my stuff in first, so uh, nobody can uh, bitch about me this time. Right. Well, I mean, you'd think with that going on, like you having that, that you know, Arkham Horror would say, "Like we can't, they can't." necessarily pigeonhole you because you're still doing that type of genre of stuff as well yeah well they, they pigeonhole you in relation to what you do for them yeah i suppose i suppose that yeah. makes sense do you have any any like bucket list 
like really want to do tie-in fiction for anyone any games or or stories or you know tv shows or anything like that that you you'd like bucket list you'd love to be invited to do a do a tie-in whether it's a short story or a novel well i i you know it's um you know there's a lot of stuff that i like i mean i've um i you know i'm so far all my marvel stuff is about the asgardian part of marvel the thor part of marvel i love that stuff but i would happy to be happy to do other marvel stuff too i'd be happy to do stuff about the the dc characters that i love um i would um i i know that there is new fiction being done about uh you know edgar rice burroughs universes and characters that i'd be able would like a crack at that i know that there is uh there are going to be new conan novels and i'd like a crack at uh, those and um a couple of years ago a friend of mine was um a friend of mine was uh kind of pitching to be the editor of a new line of conan novels and uh i she asked me for a pitch for a story and i pitched something to her that she really liked and i was hoping that um she would get the gig and therefore i would get the gig right but uh, the the new line of Conan novels is not does not involve her, and uh, it involves um, you know it's like you know, my phone hasn't run, and uh, and I know that that's that's a good thing that you know so many fantasy writers I'm sure are uh, would like to do a Conan book that uh, my chances probably aren't good, well, but I would certainly like to do Conan. I'd like to do um, I said Burroughs. Uh, Especially Barsoom, uh, so DC characters, you know, parts of the Marvel universe I haven't gotten to yet. But uh, um, I should probably say Star Wars just because there's a lot of money in Star Wars. <laughs> but, um, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd I'd be thrilled to do one. But when they sit you down, what you know, what's gives me the most interest in just just what would be fun 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 for me to do like the stuff i already mentioned right when they sit you down and there you you go to do a tie-in fiction do they give you a bunch of material like how do you get the information for what works in that universe or how that universe is do they send you like a pamphlet or do you just have to go on your own and do some research as to how it works and then say this is my idea do you have like a handler that you kind of work directly with well, you know, it varies. Um, when I did, um, when I did, um, started Forgotten Realms, you know, it was kind of like, uh, you know, you, you figure it out. But after I'd done a couple of short stories, then they started sending me all this material. You're like, well, you should have this reference material because we're going to continue to do these. And, um, and sometimes, um, you know, it, it varies from, it can go from either, you know, we expect that you're already a fan of the material or you wouldn't be pitching in the first place to, uh, well, here's some stuff figured out from this to, you know, you get really copious information, uh, like, um, you know, Arkham Horror, you know, I, I remember getting a lot of stuff. I mean, Forgotten Realms is still the champ as I'm sitting here talking to you on the bookshelf above the computer. There's like volume after volume of Dr. Volume of D and D and, uh, right and then d and d forgotten realm stuff they sent me and uh other times there's been very little i mean at one time i was um at one time i was trying to you know to get a particular uh gig and then the information they sent me was was like so fragmentary that it just you know they respond and say well you know this this, this isn't right you know and it's like you don't understand the world and it's like you know you're damn right I don't. You have to <laughs> explain it to me and it's like and then it's like well you know all the people who are uh, you know all the people who are doing this are people who are you know already extensively involved with the game and it's like well i'm not surprised because they're the ones who actually understand all the uh, things that you have to write down right I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the uh, Pathfinder Call to Darkness because I'm a huge fan of that book as well. Oh, thank you. That uh, well, it was a great, it was a very unique story and way of telling the story uh, and uh, the character in there. And I'm not going to spoil it too much for anyone else, but just the way the story was told, um, I really enjoyed part. it because it was unique. And I well, and I listened to it on audiobook, 
yeah. again, but it was, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that in our pile of uh, tie-in stories here. And I'm yeah. kind of wish that there was a chance to do more until they also stopped producing their books. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed writing that one. That one is kind of my love letter. For us. If, if you, um, you know, if you're familiar with his work, I mean, even, even kind of beyond the obvious of like, um, you know, the, the, you know, he wrote about Pellucidar, the underground world, and I wrote about uh, the underground world part of uh, of uh, Pathfinder's universe. But, uh, but uh, yeah, that that book was a lot of was a, a lot of fun. I'm I'm very proud of it. I wish that um, I wish they would get a big new line of uh, Pathfinder fiction going and ask me to do another book. I I had the I had the sequel to that one all planned, but uh, you, know, you are not the only one. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately for that. I just, yeah, I've got so many. Uh, I mean, there's so many uh, b- books that I expected to write that, right, uh, right. that didn't happen. Like with, um, you know, with uh, Brotherhood of the Griffin, you know, there are big dangling plot lines that run through that series that, um, you know, it's like, well, what what was going to happen with this? Well, I'd figured it out. I was going to tell you, but uh, they, they pulled the plug. So you mentioned you're working, doing Marvel stuff, but you have some history with writing superhero stuff before Marvel. Uh, tell us about the Imposters a little bit and how that that came about. Yeah, well, the yeah, well, the Imposter was just an idea that I had that was um, that was uh, it was kind of um, it was kind of superhero comics meets uh, post-apocalyptic fiction. And the idea was that uh, the Earth is uh, invaded by aliens and they win. And all the superheroes get killed because they were fighting the invaders bravely to the end. But a lot of the supervillains, you know, kept their heads down again, didn't get involved, so they're still around. The guy who is um, just trying to, um, you know, who's just a normal guy trying to survive, and he... Um, he stumbles on some of the gear of characters who, uh, superhero characters who's, uh, who are, you know, kind of like Iron Man, you know, he was all in their stuff, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and he, uh, starts using that stuff and starts, uh, saying, oh, look, the character is, you know, I'm, I'm this guy, he's still alive, you know, to kind of give people hope. And it, uh, goes on from there. I, I did a couple books of it. And again, that's another thing that, uh, there's more planned out, but the, uh, the sales of the first two weren't really robust. And since I'm in this trying to make a living, I kind of, you know, when something's not selling, I, you know, uh, I keep, uh, I keep moving and, uh, you know, go on to the next thing. But, you know, I might get back to it sometime. I would like to. I mean, certainly, there's one more book that is definitely planned out. And then the series was supposed to continue beyond that. But the third book will you know, in the way of trilogies, kind of wrap up a lot of stuff that's pending from the first two while opening the door on the greater world. But so, you know, maybe someday. When you, when you're writing those, do you, do you, in your mind, when you put put a character together, like the guy that's got kind of the Iron Man-y type suit, in your mind, are you like picturing an established comic book character? Are you just like coming up with something completely unique? Or do you like you take bits and pieces of concepts and put them together. How do you how do you run across that when making superhero type characters? Well, the well, if you read the um, if you read the imposter and the identities that he's got, I mean, you could kind of you could see the roots. You know, the mm-hmm. first identity that he assumes is kind of uh, you know, is, is, is derives from the shadow. The shadow I, knows. I <laughs> Yeah, I put my own spin on it, but it's kind of the shadow. And the second character is kind of the the course is probably the correspondence is probably not as close, but the the second character is kind of like Thor. And um, but uh, I, I decided it would be interesting if um, decided it would be interesting if rather than you know connecting to the um, the world of of you know pantheon of, of Norse gods or any pantheon that we currently know, he would be he would connect to the uh, pantheon of the uh, Neanderthals. <laughs> so, so that was what I did with that. And uh, but yeah, I mean, with 
it's really hard to do at this point to do kind of comic superheroes that where you don't you know where you would say well that's totally original right you no know, i don't know how um you know i you know i don't see how i don't see how that has its antecedents in any comic book character that's ever been done before right well and especially I mean, I when you've got multiple kind of versions true. of each character <laughs> yeah but i get I mean, I guess that's kind of true in fiction in general i mean you can't um I mean, you you're not going to do a um, you're not going to do a, a sword and sorcery story where you know people are going to say, well, this you know has this this protagonist has nothing in common with it with Conan or Elric or the Grey Mouser and Fawford or any you know right. sword and sorcery characters that ever been done before or Frodo or Aragorn or you know whoever. Yeah. Uh, you just, like, so you just um, you know you've you've got your influences and they're and that it's fine to have them. It's a strength to have them as long as you also have something of your own to bring to it. Right. From the imposters, you also did, and again, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Mutants and Masterminds, uh, which is a, for those that don't know, is a role, superhero role-playing game. It's had multiple editions, and you worked on something for them as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've done, uh, I did a few pieces of uh, shorter fiction, and I've actually, I've done a novel, the Mutants and Masterminds novel that's not published yet, uh, you know, because um, the company, I, as I understand it, I, I guess I'm not telling tales out of school to, to say this, you know, had uh, some financial challenges due to the pandemic. Right. And uh, one of the things that happened was they, uh, they slowed down on the uh, tie-in fiction part, publishing part of it. And uh, they're uh, they're uh, sitting on a novel by by me and uh, a novel by Aaron Rosenberg, which is kind of a sequel to my novel. And um, and hopefully, you know, the, the, you'll see them eventually. But I don't know exactly when. Yeah. Well, and hopefully, you'd think that you know, with the pandemic and a lot of people being home reading, that that would be the perfect time to put out a book. But as we found out, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to, I mean, there's all all kind of, um, I mean, I'm not, I've never actually been a publisher, so I'm like the, right. not a very knowledgeable person to be talking about this. But even I know that there's all kind of, uh, you know, expenses and supply ch chain and distribution issues that come in, into it when you're, you know, contemplating bringing out a book. And, right. Um, and it just uh, it was not practical for them to do it on the schedule that we thought we were, we had originally. Does that but does that say, uh, does that novel uh, does that tie does that connect to like Freedom City and and their custom world or is it? Yeah, something? it's all it's all characters that um, it's it's all their characters and their world. It's actually um, what was the other city? Oh, you know, I can't think of it off the top of my head. We have somebody in our Twitch stream that I'm sure can answer that because they have every one of the books. Well, no, I'm actually, it's no, actually, I, I think that back there, there's actually the um, the major part of the novel is it's set in San Francisco. Emerald City. That's what he says. Emerald so, City is um, the other city. I have, yeah, I have, I have a bit where it goes up to Emerald City, but it's mostly actually set in San Francisco. Okay. And uh, like I said, I, I I hope you'll see it eventually. It's, I, it's I hope so too. I really people, like but, uh, I really like what they've done, and I know that they that they republish some of their role playing books to be DC oriented. They have a bunch of D where they built the DC characters and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so it's really cool to see them going back to their you know, to their world as well and sticking with that. So that'll be really exciting to, to see. Yeah. Well, and, and hopefully with doing yeah, that, if they like, keep their yeah. DC connections, then you can get that DC lit book you're looking for. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, well, I know. It's like lots of things really gets complicated with these, with these kind of multi, um, right. You know, the, these multimedia characters, it's like, uh, you, you know, you've got, just because you've got the license to do a gaming module or a gaming source book with the DC characters doesn't mean at all right. that they get to do novels. Now, they might. I mean, but it all depends on what that particular deal consists of. 
All they need to do is name drop your name. That's all. I, mean, I like, definitely like to do. Um, <laughs> I wish. But yeah, I'd like to do. Um, but you know, if you do Batman or Green Lantern, those are the characters that I really like. Uh, do you have some favorite or, characters? Yeah, Obviously, I, Bat- I, Batman, I, Green Lantern. Do you have any other characters, either in Marvel or that, that are specific that you'd be like, I'd love to write these. These are my favorite characters. Well, I, um, I've got ideas for um, from DC. I've got ideas from for the Demon. Oh, and I like to do him uh, with God with um, Marvel. So many ideas. It's like my my poor editor at uh, at Akanai Books has like seen so many pitches for me for so many different characters that, uh, like I said, they decided that uh, for at least for the time being, you know, okay, do you, do you do Marvel Legends of Asgard? But I, which is great, and I enjoy it. Done. ideas for you know dr strange you know uh, damon hellstrom uh, uh mr hyde that villain character um, yeah wong dr strange is the man servant um so how is your character. and so yeah i mean marvel has a really deep thing right excuse me i was gonna say so how I didn't catch the last year. That's all right. We're and we apologize to anybody listening. We're having obviously, you know, we're I'm cutting out on him. He's cutting out on us, uh, but we'll work our way through it and do the best okay. we can. Uh, when you when you move on from some of these and you get to say a Marvel, how do they do? do they come to you and they're just like, "Hey, you've done these things," you know, because Marvel's a, you know. Wizards of the Coast is one thing, but Marvel is a completely different ball of wax when it comes to that. When they come to you, how do they come to you? How well, do they approach the way it you? Worked, well, the way, the way that it works is, is actually, and again, this is you know, how complicated some of these things can be. Um, Marvel doesn't, didn't, doesn't come uh, but um, Aconite Books made a deal with Marvel that they have the license to publish some book, to publish books based on the Marvel Comics universe. Okay. So um, if you look at um, if you look at the Aconite Books webpage, I think you'll still see um, I think that you'll still see a thing like "Do you want to write for us?" and um, and you uh, you can click on that and it will uh, tell you how you can, you know kind of throw your you know, make them aware that they're interested in writing for that publisher, and uh, which I did. And then after you've done that, assuming that they they think that you're somebody they might like to work with, they send you um, emails that say, um, "Okay, we're looking for pitches that pertain to this particular." And uh, when they then so when they sent me the ones for Marvel, I wrote. You know, said okay, I would like to do this, and I would like to do this, and I would like to do this, and they, they took one of those pitches and uh, said, okay, we'll give you a, you know, we'll, we'll develop this, and we'll, we'll, we can develop this, if you able to write that, and uh, they liked the first one that I did, so then they, uh, and the first one that I did, I, you know, had shrewdly planned to be the, uh, you know, the first part of a projected trilogy, and made them aware that it was going that that was what it was going to be, even though it was complete in itself, you know, you can just read that book and you get a, you get a completed story, but it's book one of a great band. They, so they came back and said, well, how about this book too? And so I've done that and uh, they currently have the pitch for book three. So I'm hoping that, uh, you know, hoping they'll say, yeah, finish the trilogy and then, then we'll do more stuff. Awesome. That's great. And that's, and for those listening, that's my first awesome of the night. I tend to say that a lot during the, during the, <laughs> the broadcast. Yeah. Um, I I should probably plug plug these things by name. Uh, The the first one is called The Head of Memer, and it's available now. And and that's an amazing cover, by the way. I want to point out that cover. The second one is going to is The Rebels of Vanaheim, and it's going to be available in December. Okay. Do you know how many other? I was going to ask this, but you just answered it, and I know that you answered it. Other books that they're planning on releasing that might tie into your works. 
Or is it just going to be like your stuff? Because I know sometimes in books, they will have other authors come in and be like, I want to tie into what that person's done or they have things like that. Do you know if they have plans for that? All I can tell you is that there are there are already other Marvel Legends of Asgard books that I did not write. Okay. And uh, whether they have any connection to the stuff that happens in my books, I, sus I suspect actually not. Okay. Other than just we're all right, we've got Asgard together. I mean, if, if they wanted to do that, that'd be great. But I didn't, um, I didn't, sometimes you write something and you leave it like, like a big hole for somebody else to come and plug into. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't, I didn't do that with the, uh, with the Asgard books. Those are always things that I always find fascinating when you get those, those little crossover tie-ins, even if it's just this little mention to something, you know, right. over here that happened. Uh, I always find those really fun, uh, especially chronological wise to be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. This happens around the same time that this is happening sort of things, but not, you know, obviously yeah. not everyone does them and not, not everybody enjoys that either. Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, it, 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 it can be interesting or it can be kind of annoying. I, as a comic book reader, I sometimes get annoyed with the fact that, you know, we do, here's the big event miniseries, and then like a million other issues of comic books that you don't normally read, but there'll be an issue that ties into it and tries to get you to go buy that too. But um, so it, you know, it's, um, it, it, it can be positive or negative. Can you give us a quick, rundown of what the head of Mimer is about so people have an idea what they're what they're um, getting into give us a little give us a little pitch now maybe not the one you wrote them but <laughs> yeah well there's um there's a uh norse god you know, he's got a real god in real norse mythology and it's also a figure in uh you know the marvel comics version of norse mythology named heimdall who is the uh sentinel of the rainbow bridge and uh I wanted to write kind of his origin and oh. uh, and to describe how he started out as kind of this Anaheim and uh, evolved to uh, become the uh, become the god that is in current Norse in, in current Marvel comics and uh, um, is the is the first book that describes how and where playing a crucial role in a, in a war between the Asgardians and the Jotuns and uh, starts to uh, have experience and, you know, magical equipment of, uh, that uh, makes him the god that we know. And then uh, so the story can be that uh, for Uh-oh. Looks like we lost him. Well, and I'm now I'm like flip flopped up. Is he coming back? Give us a few seconds. We'll just have to cut this out, everybody. Everybody that's watching, thank you for joining us. Are you back? I can kind of hear you. Here we are. I'm back. You're back. Yeah, I think so. But it'll there for a second. That is all right. It showed me the, it showed me a Zoom thing, not the right Zoom thing. That's all right. It uh, luckily with the podcast, I can just clip that whole section out, um, and we'll be oh we'll be good. good. That's the, that's the joys of live, though, for the people that are live stream watching us. <laughs> We're here. Right. So it's so Heimdall, and it's his origin it, it, story, and a lot of that cut out before you you disappeared there. Okay, well, like I said, it, it, it's the start of Heimdall's journey towards becoming a god mm -hmm. and um, a true god. Of, of, and it is about a uh, war between the uh, Asgardians and the Frost Giants in which he plays a critical role. Okay, awesome. I can't, oh, that's awesome, number two. I can't wait for that to come out. Do you know if that'll be on audiobook? Um, okay, that one already is out as a... Um, I'm doing a fist I'm pump here, like yes. That, uh, they're moving toward. 
Yeah. I'm told that they're moving towards um, the, the other material being available as audiobooks as well, but I don't have a timetable for that. Okay. Great. I know that um, they aren't available as audiobooks. My kids tells me she keeps looking and it's not there yet. Oh, she's like you. She loves audiobooks. Yeah, I love I love audiobooks. Well, you have some upcoming events, right? Are you you're going to be at Gen Con? For sure, right? No, I'm not going to be at Gen Con this year. No, um, oh. I'm going to. Uh, You're right. Country? I just looked at your appearance schedule and it says Makes 2019. Sad, but Gen Con... <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to be at this coming weekend on Saturday. I'm going to be at the Tampa Bay Comic Convention. Okay. It's there. And um, I'm going to be at uh, Necronomicon, which is a another uh, Tampa based uh, convention in September. And sadly, that's about it for this year. Um, Gen Con, even though they're having a live Gen Con this year, they don't have any, um, any uh, like fiction author programming as they have had in other years. So there's not really that much professional reason for me to be there. Yeah. Um, hopefully next year they will have some of that. I'll get to participate in it. I'd love to go back. I'd love to do more Dragon Con too, but uh, again, the, you know, it didn't work out for this year. Right. Well, maybe next year. Uh, you are at our lead buyer. It's so hard to plan because of, of, of COVID. Right. It is. It is. Yeah. Hopefully, it all. Hopefully, it all uh, works out in the end. On Twitter, you are our Lee Byers. On Facebook, right. you are also backslash R E uh, uh, R Lee Byers. Uh, do you have any other social media accounts you'd like to throw out there? Websites, anything like that? Right. No, not really. I know that if I was a more, I know that if I was a more business savvy person, I'd be on other things, but I'm not. That's quite all right. And for those listening, if you on our, uh, for those at our live stream, uh, we do have a link on overlay on the live stream, which has a ton of Richard's books right in there. So you can get them right off of our stream straight from Amazon. Um, I'd love to thank you for coming. Uh, it's really appreciated to see you here. Great to have you chat. Hopefully we can have you come back and do some other stuff with us. Uh, hopefully you had a good time. Sure, it was great. I, yeah, I did. I'm uh, Come back anytime, just let me know. Definitely will do. But, so everybody uh, listening- to the Everybody listening to the podcast, thank you all for joining. Thank you all for listening. Uh, we've had a blast, and we'll join. Hopefully, you join us again in two weeks for our next episode of Epic Realms. <laughs>